Good morning. Drop your phones. Let's clap. Let's applause to each other. The brave people who had to wake up early in the morning to welcome our guests from Lithuania. Around another round of applause. But we will begin with a short welcome speech from Irina Kalashnikova. Thank you for organizing this thing. Thank you for safe. gathering in us. Uh, oh. I'm glad to meet you uh, here in the early morning. Thank you for coming <laughs> uh, to Digital October. I'm Irina and I'm uh, from GoTech team. And uh, I'm happy uh, to invite, uh, to warmly welcome our Lithuanian partners from Startup Lithuania. It's not the first event uh, together with them. And uh, we had uh, two pitch sessions in uh, Lithuania and uh, uh, invited Russian startups uh, to a startup fair event in uh, uh, May, uh, this May, and uh, <laughs> I am really glad to welcome colleagues uh, from Lithuania on this stage in Russia. So, Sigita, welcome. <laughs> Please say some words about your infrastructure. Sigita Zulanyene. Good morning. Do you hear me? Okay, great. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm really happy to be here with you this morning at uh, our warm-up event. First of all, I would like to invite our ambassador to say opening word, and later we will uh, move forward with our presentations. So please, Remigius Motuzas, our ambassador, welcome on the scene. Labas Rytas, good morning, dobroje utra. Mnie kolegie skazali gavarit po ruski, potomu, što v Rasiji je 162 diplomatičske predstavitelstva. Pra praktički vse posli gavarit po ruski. Pa, naprimer, posol Avstralije, daže luče mene gavarit po ruski. Ja očen rad, što se vodnje udeljajca takoje vnimanje v Litvije. Litva, сравнительно, как вы знаете, небольшая страна. 25 лет там больше, извините, 28 лет тому назад мы были Россия и Литва были в общем пространстве. Сегодня мы являемся отдельными государствами, свободными государствами, которые и каждая из них имеет свой путь. Но тем не менее мы всегда говорим, я уже в России три года. И все-таки я в течение этих трех лет убедился, что мы самые ближайшие соседи. Например, во, во время международного форума, э, форума в Санкт-Петербурге, который проходит каждый год, как вы знаете, мае май или июне месяце, губернатор Санкт-Петербурга говорит, конечно, мне лучше поддерживать связи с Литвой, неужели с другими странами третьих стран скажем, которая является 5 или более тысяч километров от Санкт-Петербурга. Например, Вильнюс от Санкт-Петербурга только 720 километров. И как губернатор говорит, я могу кушать свежие, свежий творог каждое утро, которое можно привезти в течение 9-10 часов. Так что мы гордимся и рады, что мы ближайшие соседи, я думаю, что это очень удобное место для инвестиций. Я не зря упомянул, что мы, мы имели общее прошлое. Но сегодня, мне кажется, вы знаете, мы знаем друг друга, мы знаем язык, мы знаем обичие, мы друг друга хорошо понимаем и эмоционально. Поэтому мне кажется, что Литва очень хорошее место для doing business, и Литва сейчас занимает 14 место в мире. И мы этим гордимся. С другой стороны, мы можем, наши молодые люди, наши две институции, которые сегодня являются организаторами и представляют Литву, это Enterprise Lithuania and Invest Lithuania, и являются очень энергичными, за довольно короткий срок приобрели очень хороший опыт. И я радуюсь, потому что перед приездом сюда мы дипломаты им так, такую практику, я был делегирован канцелярию нашего правительства и работал первым заместителем канцлера, я был удивлен, что инвест Лусейне, они имеют очень хорошую традицию, что привлечь 
хоть и немного, мало, но начинает и заканчивает хорошее дело до конца. Я видел, как было приглашены американские, другие компании, те же самые, скажем, Парклай Банк и другие, которые сегодня действительно работают очень молодых людей. Мне кажется, что эти организации, они могут поделиться своим опытом. И с другой стороны, сегодня я очень много езжу по разным регионам России, и они сталкиваются с проблемой для подставки товаров экспорта в европейские страны с разными проблемами. Мы имеем опыт. Литва может быть трамплином этом и помочь вам завоевать европейские и мировые рынки. С другой стороны, мы бы были рады, что вы шли не только в Европу и европейские страны через Литву, но то же самое, чтобы вы остались и в Литве, потому что мы имеем немало сейчас российских компаний, которые успешно работают, особенно IT в сфере и других. Что, когда приходит нам посольство, спрашивают люди, как начать? Очень легко. Как нам иногда кажется, что трудно в России, так россиянам иногда кажется, что трудно в Литве. В прошлом году мы специально приглашали группу журналистов, им заплатили билеты, но говорили, была задача найти что-нибудь плохого, чтобы плохо относились к другим национальностям, ну, прямо скажу, к русским, Литве и так далее. Они ехали по всей стране, но не нашли ни одного примера. Сегодня, как и у вас в России, так у нас растет молодое поколение, образованное, которые приобрели даже университетские учебу, закончили где-то в Европе и других странах, и друг друга хорошо понимают является очень преимуществом нашего, нашей страны, является то, что все говорят на многих языках. И на русском языке, и на английском языке, и в других, и в других языках. С другой стороны, конечно, вы все имеете семьи, молодое поколение и так далее. Мы сейчас имеем единственная страна, остались Европа или постсоветского пространства, где имеем школы до университетского уровня на русском языке. Даже посла от вашего российского внучка учится в Литве российской школе. И, как посол говорил, приехала потому, что этой русской школы уровень лучше, чем в Москве, в которой она училась. Конечно, есть и в Москве хороших школ. <смех> я очень хороших школ. Я сам работал в сфере просвещения и имею хорошие связи. Но я имею в виду, что не хуже, потому что тоже очень хорошая подготовка. С другой стороны, мы имеем и английский, и американский, и на французском языке, и на других иностранных языках. Конечно, как я сказал, что Литва сейчас открытая демократическая страна и всегда всем помогает. Так что я очень рад, что сегодня столько стартапов собралось. Я рад, что вы сегодня общаетесь с нашими молодыми людьми, представителями наших самых серьезнейших компаний в Литве, которые занимаются бизнесом. И желаем вам сегодня хороших контактов, хорошего знакомства, и мы рады будем видеть вас в нашей стране, Литве. Спасибо. Well, hello again. How are you? Uh, did you have already your coffee? So, great. Uh, then, uh, Startup Lithuania and uh, Invest Lithuania, uh, our partners, want to welcome you here on this uh, warm-up event. And a um, few words about me. So, I'm Sigita, and I work for Startup Lithuania. Basically, I'm in charge for Startup Visa program. So, last few months, I'm traveling. I'm traveling a lot around different countries, and every trip, every journey for me is an adventure. Um, actually, a uh, trip to Russia and adventures of this trip started even before our plane went up. 
That is why I'm extremely excited standing here on the scene and presenting you ecosystem of Lithuania for you. So let's start. Who we are? First of all, we are facilitator. We are facilitator of our ecosystem. We, uh, our main goal, everyday goal is to build bridges between startups, government, investors, society, and so on and so on. And so uh, we do policy proposals, we collect data and analyze it just to be aware what is going on, what uh, new means uh, do the startup need, and um, of course we work with the society. We arrange and organize events, we explain society what is startup, what are we doing, what is different to traditional businesses. And uh, one more thing, uh, so we nurture the spirit of hackathons in Lithuania. Actually, Startup Lithuania was an organi organization who even brought hackathons to Lithuania several years ago, and we still are doing it uh, every year, three or four hackathons, to uh, gather these talented people and to show that they can implement the ideas and also gather the teams. Uh, what else? We do promotions of startups because we want them to scale, we want them to grow, they want them to prosper. And a few more things. So uh, Irina already mentioned a startup fair. So every May we do startup fair. And uh, last but not least, we work with startup visa programs. So every startup from non-EU countries who wants to come to Lithuania as to European Union uh, can apply to our startup visa program and do their business there. So, um, before giving you some uh, records and uh, numbers, first of all, I would like to point your attention that all the information uh, we gather from publicly available databases and also the investments. The investments are presented here, only disclosed ones. Why? Of course, we want to talk big, but we cannot. And, uh, of course, if you want to, uh, more, to know more about uh, Lithuanian startups, you can always come to our website, startuplithuania.com, and check the database. Uh, we have currently more than 500 startups, and you can check what are we doing, how are we living, and so on and so on. Startup ecosystem. What is that? We already, uh, I, I already mentioned that we build bridges and we sometimes describe our ecosystem in these five stages. So first stage is meet up uh, the places, the events where people just can gather, know what is startup, what are they doing. Um, so, for example, it uh, might be schools, schools for coding. It can be universities where people are coming to learn more. Uh, it might be tech parks or hubs or startup spaces and so on and so on. So team up is more of a stage when people already have ideas and they want to gather, uh, they want to share their knowledge and they want to do something more. So for example, it's a Kaunas University startup space or for example, Vilnius Gedmino Technikos University Linkmenu Fabrikas. It's also a place where a lot of startups, a lot of teams are coming together. And our stages are uh, start up, speed up, and grow up. In these three stages, we already see startup fairs, uh, Meta, for example, agency of science, innovation, and technology who work with the innovative businesses also. Uh, acceleration programs, uh, venture capital funds, and others. Uh, so these are well-known um, tech parks and hubs in Lithuania. Uh, actually, me, my colleague uh, Carolina, we are working in the Sapiegos uh, Vilnius Tech Park. So it's a cool place. It's very different to all the other glass uh, corporate spaces. It's a huge park with the old uh, hospital buildings and it was uh, reconstructed and uh, now it is a cool tech park where a lot of startups, a lot of stars 
of startups are coming together. Also, Rice Vilnius, uh, Rice Vilnius was created by Barclays Bank to gather the fintech startups in one place for them to be able to share their knowledge, share their ideas, uh, meet some other startups who are working with the fintech products and create something cool. Also, we have a blockchain center in Vilnius, and it is first blockchain center in Northern Europe. So we are very, very proud of that. And also here uh, is SCB, SCB Innovation Center. So our bank um, in Lithuania already opened Innovation Center and also give the place for startups uh, to create. Some venture capital funds, uh, these are mm, most active and well known. So Practica Capital, Contrarian Ventures, for example, are working and specifying on sustainable e energy projects, uh, LitCap, AltCap, OpenCircle, uh, Nextery Ventures. And uh, yes, when you are matured, you go to ven uh, venture capitals, but what to do if you are the little one? What if you are just growing up from the first, first stages? So uh, usually you go to private investors until March of 2018. We didn't have any association or any other organization for private investors to be able to gather, to share knowledge, to uh, share tools, to share legal frameworks of uh, private investments. So in March 2018, um, Litban, we call it Litban, or Lithuanian Business Angel Network, was established. And in three months, uh, it gathered more than 60 person who has additional money, who wants to do investments, and uh, who wants and can uh, be a mentors for these young people who want to do their business. Uh, also, we have co-investment funds, and now uh, two co-investment funds start their activity, and now they have uh, around 20 million of assets uh, that can be invested to micro, small, or medium enterprises. And uh, especially, I would like to notice that if the company, the enterprise, is doing R&D activity, they might apply even to 90% of these co-investment funds, so it means that only 10% of investment you need to find at private investors, and other part will be uh, uh, devoted from these co-investment funds. And so how are we doing? We are doing great, and uh, well, you know that we are a small country, but even uh, if we are a small country, in six years, the number of our startups increased more than six times. Now we have uh, 523 startups on our database, and even now, it, not all of them are counted. Startup industry, so you can see that uh, most part is like others, but of course, uh, like FinTech, um, blockchain, Gaming is really booming uh, in Lithuania, and uh, companies from other countries, from EU and non-EU countries, are coming to Lithuania to do their businesses there. Fintech, yes, the well-known buzzword, and uh, you, everyone knows about all these uh, payment uh, methods and tools and so on and so on. So yes, we have forward-thinking regulation, and also we have future ready payment uh, infrastructure. But these are only two advantages of our ecosystem for fintechs. But I won't talk about them long because Julius, my colleague Julius, will present it in a very detailed way. And, well, these are the names of, of few Lithuanian startup stars. Who knows at least one of them and what are they doing? Have you heard about anyone? Yay, Yulus, applause for Yulus. 
So let me present then a few our startup stars. So Vinted is a marketplace for uh, secondhand clothes, uh, accessories, shoes. And by the way, this company, this startup is already attracted about 100 million of investment uh, during few rounds. And so they are booming. Traffy. Traffy is an app where you can uh, manage your journey, where you can manage your route. Uh, you can find their taxis, you can find their routes, you can find their public transportation means, and you can manage your own journey in your way, not, uh, um, not making a lot of uh, uh, researches how to move from one place to another in different, different cities. Oberlo. Oberlo is a drop shipping platform and it was bought by Shopify a few years ago. We are very proud on this exit. And by the way, they are still working on this project. They are still developing it, but they have a lot of freedom and Shopify uh, just gave them all freedom. On only they are under Shopify now. Tessonet. Tessonet is also one of our promising stars and they run a lot of uh, various projects, cybersecurity projects worldwide. Deeper. Okay, guys, who likes fishing? Do you know about Deeper? No. So, by the way, I think you should know about it because they created portable sonars for fishing, for any kind of fishing. So, you just uh, bring this bubble you put it into the water and you know where the fishes are. Uh, TransferGo is a fintech company. Also, uh, NordCurrent is a gaming company. Board Panda, who knows about Board Panda? Does anyone use Facebook at all? Okay, so for me, Board Panda was a huge discovery because, uh, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago, I just... Uh, browsed on to Facebook, I found interesting content, I downloaded the app, I started to use it because they always have something in interesting to write and to show. And uh, well, I like Bird Panda. And only a few months ago, I realized that we are Lithuanians. Uh, two guys from Lithuania created this content platform. And also Pixel Matter, who created a tool, a painting tool for Max. So, uh, investments for for today we have around 20, uh, 250 millions uh, raised. Uh, in two thousand seventeen, it was about uh, twenty four point six million euros invested uh, into startups. And you know, in two thousand eighteen, we are getting faster. And for today, we already have 60 uh, million raised. And it's without ICOs. Why I say without ICOs? Because last year was almost a miracle for ICOs because Lithuanian companies raised around half a billion uh, ICOs. Uh, and the uh, biggest uh, deals was Bankera, WePower, and Moneta. Startup fair. Irina mentioned startup fair. Yes, it is a, one of the biggest events for startups in the region. And uh, so startups, investors, accelerators, uh, corporates, uh, policy makers, uh, society can come here. They might find uh, deal stages, they can find uh, panel discussions, they can find some workshops and other and other, and uh, usually it gathers approximately around 1,500 1, uh, uh, attendees. Last year, uh, there was a pitching, and uh, the winner of pitching was our company, Oxipit. Oxipit actually now is a star because they also won Life Science Baltic, and also they won award from uh, German uh, from from Germans, and what is this tool? So this tool is uh, used for 
uh, making diagnosis of from lungs uh, X-ray photos. And uh, last but not least, uh, so it's Start a Visa. Uh, Start a Visa program is suited for non-EU uh, startups who wants to enter European Union market. So basically, uh, it uh, started in 2017, uh, beginning of 2017, and for today we already have more than 250 applications submitted more than 50 applications approved, and we already have 15 companies established in Lithuania. And what I'm especially proud of, so they already have raised investments, they already have growing numbers of users, they already have growing number of incomes, so they are prospering there in Lithuania, and we are very, very proud about that we might help them to do that. Uh, so, Startup Visa, um, well, as I said, it is uh, suited for uh, shareholders and co-founders. Uh, you can have easier, smoother uh, procedure of migration uh, for temporary residence permits. And also, now we have uh, one plus one year for temporary residence permit. Uh, actually, we are waiting for uh, a signature, and we will have three years for a startup visa program. Uh, some advantages, I will not talk about them long because if you are interested in the startup visa program, you can come today to our booth, we have a booth, and uh, we can talk about it more, uh, the advantages, how to do that, the steps, what you have to do to apply, and so on and so on. And so for the finishing uh, of uh, this presentation, I just want to uh, point out a few initiatives that our government is making for startups. So, two acceleration programs that have funds from European Union will start their activities in 2019, and they will have approximately 15 million funds for investment to startups. Also, we have around uh, 250 million uh, for investments, and these investments are, um, it will be made by eight funds supported by European Union and also Lithuanian government. And uh, one very, very important thing. So, uh, official startup definition must be confirmed in 2019, and this confirmation will be followed by tax incentives. Yes, the government is thinking forward because we are a small country and we have to do more than others to attract the startups. A uh, few things, so three years of a startup visa, startup visa employee because currently we have program for founders and also other uh, incentives and initiatives from the government. So thank you very much. If you would like to talk about Startup Visa or Startup Lithuania or our ecosystem, please come to our booth. And now I would like to invite Julius, who will present our FinTech ecosystem and FinTech environment. So please welcome Julius. Thank you, Zinita, for the good presentation. Uh, I think we don't have much time, so maybe once you put the presentation, I'll just skip through some slides, but we, we're happy to chat afterwards this event or, you know, just come and meet us at the booth. So myself, uh, I work for the Invest Lithuania, the agency what we help uh, grown-ups and, and companies uh, by consulting them, advising them, and actually having a smooth landing, uh, setting up the operations in, in Lithuania. So I'll go a little bit about in general business landscape and technology why. Uh, why Lithuania is, is doing uh, so great, and then we'll talk about uh, the, the fintech environment, and then just the question for you, is it the hottest fintech hub in Europe? Then you can um, think yourself. So uh, uh, I will go through these uh, four, four main stages, so what gives really that's the edge, but uh, just a brief intro, how it's all happened. It's uh, a little bit more than a decade ago, uh, Barclays Bank initially came to Lithuania, 
to, to set up the uh, IT development center. Um, they, they initially they planned to hire like 200 developers. Now they have 1,000 people working down there. So what we see that afterwards, Western Union came, the biggest office outside the US, 2,000 people. Then we had the uh, Danske Bank, uh, we have NASDAQ, development offices there. And then we see that entire basically uh, uh, landscape of technology was lifted up. We saw a lot of startups uh, came afterwards, and then we see that even now a lot of small and medium enterprises come and establish in Lithuania because they can hire really good talent. So talking about the talent, of course, the government saw that the potential, and especially with a small country, we have to find our niche. And I will talk about a little bit more fintech. But the government increased the funding, uh, and we see more and more you know, students, uh, young people choosing IT studies, and we see the pipeline is uh, increasing every year. Uh, we also have the uh, private initiatives. Uh, it's like a private academy so where they work on their requalification that people who chose, in, let's say, I don't know, medicine, business studies, they want to now go to the technology sector, they can go and choose like short term courses. And that can be really good, uh, you know, your pre junior or junior level of people uh, for you to hire in the future. The other area where we're working on, because we are a small country, we need to increase our talent pool. So we're working for the non-EU talent by relocating them, helping them to come and establish to Lithuania. And just some few numbers, and it's, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. And some quotes from the uh, companies who already came, they, they basically what they do, they move like core team, and then they can hire the team around it with the local talent. And that helps them to expand in Europe. So we are very well educated. You know, majority of the people have the higher education and we lead in EU. Uh, no problem with the foreign languages. Uh, English is among uh, most popular, but of course, half of the young population speaks at least two foreign languages. Uh, and I, I know a lot of you know people speak Russian as well, so it's not a problem for you guys. And we're really proud that you know the the woman is uh, really joining the technology sector and we leading in in EU that as well. So just business environment, just some numbers. So uh, normally it's interesting for the corporates is 15% uh, profit tax, which is fourth lowest in the entire European Union. Uh, and pretty flat structure for the other uh, taxes and just some information on how the salary works. Uh, what's really important and helps for the companies and startups is the incentives, of course. So we have uh, two dedicated programs for the little bit grown ups. So one of them is HR Invest. It's available for their basically training people uh, to skill them up to their certain level. And that's a half a million for your three years project. It's like 3,000 euros per employee. It's a matching grant, 50-50. And really interesting is a Smart FDI. That's European Union grant. Uh, it's available 3 million euros, uh, matching grant 50-50. Or for the small enterprises, it even can be 70%. It's really important that a lot of companies, they come and uh, want to do some R&D activities in uh, software development. So if you want to work on something innovative and something new, uh, you can get access to these funds and you know, it can help you to, uh, let's say, create some new amazing products. Uh, the infrastructure, so of course, uh, our offices is uh, still very low comparing to the majority of Western European countries. It's multiple times from, from like London. Uh, and what you really get for the price uh, you just see on the screen is basically the really very good located, centrally located in a nice building, skyscrapers where really your talent will love to come and work for you guys. Uh, startup ecosystem, so to get a little bit touch on it. Uh, what we do, we work with uh, quite a lot of fintechs uh, and uh, just beginning of the, this year and then we'll do the next year again, we did the fintech survey report. So we have now more than 100 20 uh, startups, uh, so the entire ecosystem is growing more than 30% every year, and it's really interesting that uh, one third of these companies are coming from outside Lithuania, so we see more and more international companies actually come to Lithuania to set up the operations and they can scale up. Uh, what we also have is uh, the sandbox regimes and in different schemes. Uh, so one of them is energy. Of course, the energy is utilities and very sensitive area. But for some companies who want to create and test the products, it really can be a good environment because you can sit down together with energy. Uh, you know, main, main company in Lithuania, you can have access to all the data and you can test your products, make sure it's running. The same with the fintech sandbox. Uh, Lithuanian bank, you know, they can open the data uh, and then you can do your trials on the real data and make sure that your product is uh, running smoothly. 
Uh, and of course, the perfect living pace. Uh, Vilnius has already been named amongst like you know big cities like Copenhagen and Barcelona. So it's it's really good you know what the people can come and live and and and, and have this work and life balance as well. So uh, just few success stories. Uh, so we have already some companies like Uber who came like and created an engineering office in Lithuania. We have uh, big success at Tech at Forum. We have Wix.com. Probably you heard about it. They more than 100 people. Unity, uh, they're creating the game platform and and, and few more. Uh, we have, of course, some uh, relocation uh, companies. The, these are the names of the uh, companies who have some Russian roots or the, the founders of the companies. They, they, they relocated some people, core team, and maybe, and then they will be looking to hire people around that team. So we have Mero, we have Cargo, uh, Auriga, just few, 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 few to name. And of course, the game industry is doing quite well there as well. Uh, and of course, we, we're doing very well in, uh, in terms of global business services where we're attracting the big names, big banks, and, and, and financial sector, uh, where they come and create a different type of uh, skill set. And it's really interesting, Western Union, they have 2,000 people, as I mentioned, and they have people speaking 34 different languages in one center. I think that's really outstanding. Uh, some local front runners, but I think Sigita just touched a bit it, so I will skip it through because I want to go and talk a little bit about the fintech uh, and the way we see it that Lithuania can be your gateway to Europe, actually. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, that because Lithuania is a part of the European Union, and that means if for the fintechs, especially in the payments and digital bank, you need the license. Uh, if you get one license in any member state, let's say in Lithuania, you automatically can be passported to all across the European Union. With one license, you actually access to 500 million people and you can take your services from there. Uh, why, why Lithuania? Because this, uh, we believe it's very pro-business friendly our regulator, the central bank. Uh, you will get the license in two, three months time, which is two or three times faster than any other jurisdictions. I know in Amsterdam, uh, uh, you get take about a year in Ireland. It takes about a year, so it's really the timing. It's important, especially in the digital world. We also have uh, a light bank license, uh, Revolut. Maybe you heard they already applied for it. So it's a, a challenger bank. So it gives you like you know uh, the the core fr infrastructure allows you know to do these banking activities. So you can do payments, lending, uh, deposit taking, uh, and all the uh, the payments. Did I mention payments? Yeah. Uh, so it's just basically one step further from the payments or electronic wallet institutions going to the bank. So you just step in the middle. The main idea for this, why the bank rated, because it's a capital requirement is only one million instead of five million for the normal banks. Uh, sandbox regime I mentioned, and we have a remote KYC, which is, doesn't need to come to the branch. You know, you can do verifications uh, basically online. So the old people don't need to come to the branch to sign some paperwork. Uh, the infrastructure, so uh, as Lithuania is a part of Europe, so basically uh, what the bank created, they created the central link system where you can access to the central link and you basically transferring your euros, you can do directly through the central bank. And that means you bypass your middleman, like, you know, uh, commercial banks. Uh, the idea is just basically because the central bank is non-profit organization, so your cost will be three times lower than they are doing access to the commercial bank. And you will have the IBAN accounts. So the, for the normal fintechs, you will look like a normal banking account with your IBAN who everybody can transfer the money. And uh, the, the other part, as I mentioned about the our talent pool, was really blending together the licensing and all these talents. Uh, so we're working multiple ways and uh, all these names really helps. So we have people coming from the financial sector background, a lot of people working in Western Union, uh, Barclays and so on, uh, with the, especially with the compliance uh, experience, and we have a really good technology talent. So put them together, and you really have a good team for your fintech to develop for your future. Uh, just few names already. As I mentioned, we're attracting companies from all over the world. We have some companies from US, from from Israel, from even Singapore, and the sector is really really growing. So really, definitely invite you at least to follow the news and just to find out wherever it can be the really good step for you to come and over and establish uh, in Lithuania. What we really help, as I mentioned, we help with the decision making, consulting, and to have basically guys use a smooth landing. So if you have any questions, you know, come and catch us uh, after this event, or we will be there by the booth at Startup Lithuania. So thank you very much, and have a good day.